Uh, hello and welcome to RA3D at Purdue's uh, robot overview for our 2026 rebuilt robot, Panini Press. So we're going to kind of walk you through the different mechanisms, talk about a few of our issues along the way, uh, things maybe I think are good to incorporate, different just kind of elements, and then talk about some of our goals for the future. So starting off with our intake, we found out kind of earlier at kickoff that about a four and a half inch compression works really, really well with these uh, fuel. Uh, so we're running four inch uh, compliance wheels just on our intake to kind of pull those in. The intake does have a four bar to allow it to stow in to avoid any big hits or to hopefully prevent it from breaking as much in the match. And then uh, flips out, of course, to get about the uh, compression we want. Looking at the edge, we tried these mechanism wheels and they don't actually benefit us because the bumper squishes enough. It doesn't really uh, funnel them inwards like you normally see with mechanism wheels. So we are going to end up taking those off when we go to compete with this robot or take it to demo events. But that's where we're in it for the three days. So we figured we'd keep them on as a fun lesson for you all. So we've gone ahead and powered up that intake. We'll show it in taking a ball. All right, so as you saw, comes in, wheel spin, of course, Go ahead and hit the ball and knock it in. Now, one small issue we do have, this is more of probably a mechanical assembly. Um, shockingly, uh, robots don't come together too well at 3 a.m. on minimal hours of sleep. We do have a dead zone. Uh, it works fairly well head on, but especially if you hit a little bit of an angle, uh, the intake's not perfect. However, the compression does work very well at the four and a half inches. We just have to realign our plates a little bit. It's a little hard to see up here, but there's this little polycarb ramp we put. This is to help ramp it up into our conveyor. Um, this is honestly, there's no real measurement to this. This is a simply, we cut uh, some thinner polycarb we had uh, and stacked up two uh, two by one tubes and just kind of bent it in place. Uh, this isn't even properly bent. We didn't heat it and fold it or anything like that. This is quite literally just resting on top of this and that is held up by enough. It gives us a good enough uh, kind of ramp to knock the ball into our conveyor. Going into the conveyor, it's a little bit hard to see because our funnel plates or our hopper plates aren't clear. But this is, once again, it is a simple conveyor system. It's got a little bit of a downwards angle to give it that kind of gravity-fed advantage of just wanting to go to the, you know, the lowest point. Um, but we also ran three separate pulleys because no matter where, there, the ball would always be touching two pulleys. That allows it to, when it's powered with the, uh, the hopper and all that, it vector, or sorry, it uh, pulls it down inwards and over to get sucked up into our hopper. Around that, we have our funnel, or we have our hopper. Uh, the hopper is the one thing that like, we absolutely, we don't love our design for. We highly recommend you go look at other teams because we did not maximize our hopper space. We very quickly threw it together at the end because our goal was to work on other things such as the, uh, a really good indexer, especially since we didn't do the smaller hooded shooters you see from a lot of other teams, and to work on things like the climber, which we'll get to towards uh, a little later on in this overview. But the general idea is it holds the fuel and the intake becomes that little hard stop at the end to block it the rest of the way. Now we did go on ahead and put a little bit of a plate here on the top of it, and that plate serves two purposes. First of all, it allows us to, uh, if we hit the bump or things like that, or from our intake launching fuel upwards, it allows it, or it, it, uh, it doesn't allow fuel to fly out as easily. It also allows us by having a slit, and because it's got kind of a little bit of a, maybe a more downwards angle, we could probably work on it a little further. Um, it allows us to feed from the outpost or things like that, should we want to. Uh, yeah. So then uh, going on to the next subsystem, we have our, uh, our indexer, as we're calling it, and then into our shooter. So the indexer is, once again, it is very simple, just kind of wheels that go on ahead and feed the ball upwards. It can go too wide, um, and then it goes up to our shooter, which is a two to one geared for uh, speed uh, shooter with three inch stealth wheels for about a five inch compression gap. Uh, it's in our CAD, I don't remember it off the top of my head with two, powered by two individual X60s. You could belt these together, but we elected to run them separately because that allows us to get either backspin for feeding to launch the ball a little bit more out, or topspin for um, your more general shots to allow it to hit the back of the funnel and roll in. Because uh, as we saw kind of from 2022, firing straight down in is, can be very effective, but if you overshoot a little bit and hit the back and roll in, that's a little bit easier to do than just trying to get the perfect shot every single time. So that kind of covers the mechanical aspects of our robot, other than our last little subsystem, our elevator. Now, this is, of course, right now, just mount, it's not mounted in place, anything like that. We just wanted to put it in to kind of show our spacing and show how compact it is. Now, it does not have the motors on it currently, but the motors would mount very, very, they're, they're small. They're not uh, in parallel with this. 
They're at a 90 degree with a bevel gear to get it down to the appropriate shaft. So they mount very, very small. Um, there are other teams, of course, that have very good climb mechanisms as well. We saw out of the three days. But especially between that and the fact that you could put some sort of thin polycarb plate there, like 16th or just something, nothing that really adds weight to hold all three of these hooks down flat until you go to climb. That makes this a very simple climb because it's an elevator. There's no running wires up to the top. There's no anything crazy like that, especially coming out of Reefscape, which was such an elevator heavy game. It is, should be a very simple thing to repurpose. Uh, this is a COTS elevator from, this is the two stage thrifty bot climb or elevator. So it's a very simple mechanism that you could probably substitute with any other uh, major vendors elevator kit. So now I think we're gonna go ahead and load up the rest of our ball, or the rest of our robot from the hopper. And then we're gonna go on ahead and fire off a few shots to show our uh, kind of our rough mass distance, math, max distance and things like that. So of course, we're trying to be a little gentle on it because uh, we've not actually fine-tuned that because of course our hopper was our last thing. Um, but fuel sits up, we can fit approximately 15 to 20 in there. We, uh, we, we, we're gonna measure that and probably put that in a chief thread by the time we're done with this robot. But the nice thing is, is that they just kind of sit, they chill, they, they do not hit this really because that churro stops them from pressing super hard on it to miss with the uh, later on shots. And then truly we can fit a few more in the index or if we wanted to spin it. But Josh, you want to go ahead and fire off a few fuel? So as you can see, our shot is not 100% tuned quite yet, but we have a very solid uh, accuracy. We can fire roughly, what, 10.4 or so fuel a second? Does that sound about right? You said fires, what, like point, point oh nine, something like that seconds? All right, he can track it later. We'll put that on the chief thread too at some point. The gist is we clear roughly 10 fuel a shot. Uh, they're really quick. That gives us, uh, even though our hopper's a little bit smaller, which I, that lets other teams pull ahead of us, of course, with how fast our shooter clears and with how uh, we can vary the top spin, things like that for feeding or cycling across the field to steal opponent's game pieces, things like that. Uh, we can in theory run a faster cycle than robots running others, which means we maybe don't lose that as much from the smaller hopper. Uh, I'm going to pass it off to Josh, talk a little bit more about the code stuff, but that's kind of the mechanical aspect. The software on this, ro oh. software on this robot is pretty simple. There's nothing too complicated about the basic components. We just got a basic servo to deploy the uh, intake. We got basic rollers for the indexer, belt, uh, intake roller, and the flywheel. And the flywheels are just basic flywheel systems doing velocity control. The really systems of note is the um, limelight gets us our pose on the field so we can do an automatic alignment as well as gauging our distance from the hopper so we can use a velocity regression for each of our flywheels in order to get a variable shot velocity depending on how far we are away from the hopper so we can shoot from many different positions on the field while automatically aligning. Um, the only other really thing of note software wise is that we built, uh, we cloned our repo from our template repo that's also on our GitHub. And that allowed us to have built in simulation, lots of template subsystems, and pretty much just drag and drop components to build subsystems to easily build every part of this robot. The bring up of like the basic subsystems was pretty simple, maybe only an hour or so to get PID on the flywheels and the uh, intake deploy. The rest of it just worked because we tested it pretty much all in simulation ahead of time, which really helped make our bring up times a lot shorter, which is very important when you only have three days to work on a robot. Alrighty, thank you, Josh. And now just kind of going over, what if we had more than three days? So we talked about a lot of just, man, it would have been awesome if we could have done this if we had just another hour, we had you know another six hours, or we had a little bit more time to get a plate manufactured. And so we want to talk about those actual fixes because well, I'm, this robot is not perfect, and it's not necessarily even the best strategy that we'll see come out of the game by any means. If you incorporate things, fix the things that we got wrong because you have more time. You have, you know, 60 days and we have three. So, starting over here with our intake, we talked earlier about the dead zone, just to kind of show. So when this intake, when it flies down, we have the compression we want to pull in the ball. But if we just kind of force it under there, we kind of pop around the side. You see there is this dead zone here where the ball will kind of free spin and it won't get it up over the bumper. Fix that. Get it closer to, you know, the magic number that we call the four and a half inches. That would make this intake far more consistent and let you get fuel a lot quicker. 
uh, the current way that we've kind of worked around that for the sake of time is if you just keep intaking, this one will pop up and another one will take its space. So it does mean you, you kind of get one stuck fuel, which is a small increase in cycle time, and that's one you don't want to have in an actual match. But for the three days, it is acceptable. Uh, second, the hopper. Our hopper's small. We, if you look at this, there is no nice angles, there is no whatever. This was kind of just quick math, <clears throat> thrown into CAD and jigsawing out plates. So make these a lot better. For example, uh, the battery over here, there's no other electronics up here. You could funnel this outwards a little bit. And if you funnel this outwards, you could get a few more fuel. You could probably funnel this a little further out over the robot or over these swerve pods or that swerve pod or all the other things. There is other places to hide fuel that we just didn't because we didn't have the time to put that much focus into this while also doing things like the climb. Um, lastly, up in our uh, indexer, there is a very small dead spot, which is why it doesn't even always hit. But let's see if I can force one up this way. Oop, I can't. All right. Um, all right. So right here, you can see there is a point where you don't quite hit this top wheel. And that can sometimes cause fuel to get stuck there. It does not always get stuck there. And generally, when it does, the next one pops it up. And they kind of both clear. But the general fix for that is probably just swap these to three-inch wheels. Or you know, adjust your center to center distance a tiny bit to get it to where all three of these, you always have you know, two points of contact. But overall, uh, we like this robot. We think there's a lot of room for improvements. Um, we're going to continue to do things like tune the shooter. Uh, we're going to continue to try and maybe get that uh, climb to actually fasten and show what that would look with our prototype, uh, fix the intake compression, just little things like that, and then hopefully uh, take and compete a little bit. But yeah, that's our robot. So if you have any questions, of course, uh, we're still going to reply to you know YouTube comments, Instagram comments, uh, Chief Threads, stuff like that. Feel free to reach out. Um, but otherwise, good luck to all the teams, and we'll see you next year.